Vaping is fast becoming an epidemic amongst children, according to shocking new NHS figures that reveal those as young as nine years old are being hospitalised with collapsed and bleeding lungs linked to illegally sold e-cigarettes. Yeah, primary Amazing. school children. Um, in the year to April, there were at least 15 cases where children aged nine or under admitted to hospital, up from just one last year and two the year before that. Well, Ewan Fisher nearly died after taking up vaping at 16 and required an artificial lung to keep him alive and still suffers to this day and has a warning for children and for parents. Ewan joins us now alongside Professor of Paediatric Respiratory and Environmental Medicine, Jonathan Grigg. Very good morning to you both. Morning. morning. Look, Ewan, um, your story is, is a real shocker. For, for kids. I mean, we understand from these figures that really little kids are, are taking up vaping. What's, what happened to you at the age of 16? Uh, so I took up vaping as a substitute for smoking cigarettes mm -hmm. because uh, I wanted to fulfil my boxing career and try and get the maximum potential that I could. Um, and I didn't listen to my mum when she told me to stop vaping. Uh, as a good parent, she was trying to help me. Mm. Uh, and it just went downhill from there, really. Uh, I ended up on two different life support machines, in a coma, uh, and on an ECMO machine, where uh, that's a lung bypass machine, and I had 20% chance of uh, living, and it ruined my whole life. When you say it ruined your whole life, do you mean you, you have not fully recovered and you, and you don't think you will? Yeah, no, I don't personally. They did tell me I'd make full recovery, but I'm still having quite a lot of uh, side effects now and it took me quite a long time to walk again, so I missed a lot of my, like, uh, main teen years. How long were you in hospital for? Uh, so I was in hospital for a total of eight weeks uh, and then I actually came out of hospital and had to go back in because I had to go on a high dosage of steroids every month from then onwards. So, so it's having a direct impact on your lungs, yeah, the, the vapes. How, how often were you vaping and, and kind of what did the doctors say about what it was doing to you physically? So uh, I was vaping as like a substitute for cigarettes. So mm. um, I was doing it, say, 10, 12, 14 times a day. Mm. Uh, and uh, obviously it's called hypersensitivity pneumonitis what happened to me. Uh, and there was st studies that was done with the two liquids that I used that uh, shown that something in the liquids did affect my lungs. <sighs> Professor Greg, you're an expert on, um, on children's breathing and lungs. And you'll have been watching what's happened in our country mm. over recent years, listening to Ewan's story. The fact that his mum said, don't vape. Something's gone wrong, hasn't it? There's something failed in our public health and in our NHS where we've gone from telling people who are heavy smokers as adults that vaping is better to giving the impression that vaping is, is safe or it's OK. And as a result, there's loads of kind of colourful ads and vapes being sold and children can actually get them free. They can't buy them, but they can be given them. But actually, what is the impact on the lungs of children? What do we know about what vaping does to children and young adults? Well, we know that they're not safe and that the substances that you're breathing in, it's not just nicotine, which, of course, is highly addictive, and this is extremely worrying when children's brains are developing, but also these other substances which, are OK, maybe if you take them by mouth, but absolutely are not OK when you breathe them into the lung. They're, these are sort of food flavourings and other types of flavouring particles, ultrafine particles as well, which are generated during the vaping process. We know in a range of models that they have a range of adverse effects. We can see adverse effects like inflammation and other things in, in our models. Our worry, and absolutely, the urine is the sort of tip of the iceberg, we're building up a whole cohort of children who are going to be addicted to yeah. vaping over the long term, and this long-term effect is going to have long-term effects on their lungs, their developing lungs, and cause disease. This and where do you think it went wrong? I mean, at what point mm. did, did, did we get this wrong? Who failed to tell parents and children about the dangers of vaping? How did it happen? That's a very good question. I think certainly the government and Public Health England just got too enthusiastic about this, uh, you know, new therapy which everyone could just buy in shops and it will stop, uh, stop smoking. As you say, 
none of us are going to have a problem with someone who's tried everything and is a 50-year-old uh, smoker and just trying it as a last resort. Absolutely, there's no... We're not talking about this. We're talking about a public health uh, issue where everyone is seeing vapes and children are being attracted to them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think we do have to ask the question, where, where did we go wrong? I think it was probably the advice that was given to Public Health England from enthusiasts of va uh, vaping who have doubled down sub subsequently. Haven't the enthusiasts, are they the big... Tobacco companies? No, they're not. They're often academics who are coming from the smoking area and who, you know, could quite reasonably hope that this was going to be the answer yes. for everything. It's not the answer for everything. Even for smoking cessation, uh, it's very unclear whether these are better and certainly and then probably not safer than other well proven methods. Yeah. The, uh, according to NHS Digital, there were th almost 350 hospitalisations due to vaping last year. But this figure that children aged nine or under, there were 15 cases of little children. I mean, that just must make your heart hurt as a professor yeah. of, of paediatric this medicine. Is, this is terrible. And, I mean, it's not as if we haven't warned uh, for many, many years that this was, was going to happen. We were absolutely sure that we were going to see adverse effects bleeding in the lung. Yeah. Because this, this substance that you're breathing in is not just benign. It, it's causing stress of cells and over the long term, it's sure going to cause disease. Ewan, what would you say, because I'm a mum and, um, you know, Ramvis mentioned this as well, of course, her, her child's much younger, but, the, you know, the access to this stuff is just everywhere and they're colourful and they taste nice. They're like the equivalent of Alka Pops, aren't they? Yeah. The children. But, as you know, parents seem to have very little influence. So what would you say directly to the kids who think vaping's absolutely fine, stop nagging me, Mum? Yeah, I'd say please, please don't do it, because it's not you, like, that it affects fully. It affects everyone around you, all your family, because mm -hmm. you're having to be looked after non-stop. And it's also, like, putting an advanced effect on the NHS as well, because mm -hmm. you're taking up hospital beds for stuff that you wouldn't need to be in there for if you wasn't vaping, really. Mm. Would you... It, I mean, were you close to death because of what had happened? Yeah, so I did get told I had a 20% chance to live. Uh, and that one night uh, in Glenfield Hospital, they had my family come in and say, like, you need to say your goodbyes because we don't think he's going to make it through the night. But luckily, I pulled through and I'm still here today. Amazing. Oh, my goodness. And that's a direct consequence of vaping. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Gosh. Professor Grigg, when I think back to when I was 10 years old or, um, or uh, even towards Ewan's age, um, back then there were glamorous adverts for smoking on billboards. Mm. You went into the newsagents to buy sweets and there was all these colourful cigarette packages. It was, it was cool to smoke. People smoked on television and we now know that was terrible. It was killing people. Do you think we'll look back in 20 years at our society today and say the way we've allowed vaping to become everywhere and cool and fun is as bad as smoking um, when I was young. Well, certainly that's the same thing. Uh, but we have a chance. We can change things. We can change things by stopping ad advertisement uh, in, in shops. Uh, we believe we should go to T21, which means that... Uh, children uh, shouldn't have any access to cigarettes and vaping until the age of 21. Um, so we can, we can change things. And in, in my day and your day, you know, this went on for years, decades. Uh, we need to do something yeah. now. Well, thank goodness you're still with us. And what uh, a wake-up call for anyone who is using them. Thank you very much indeed, Ewan and uh, Professor Grigg. Thank, thank you, you as well. Much. Really thank important. Thank you for having me. Oh, nice.